How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe, and if you've ever gone to buy a hard drive, you might be thinking that all of them are pretty much the same except for the size. And maybe some might be a little bit faster than others, but for the most part there's not really any differences. But there actually are several different types of hard drives, different classes, and even certain specialized hard drives for specific purposes that are actually kind of interesting to talk about. So that's what we're gonna go over in this video. And hopefully by the end, you should have a pretty good idea for the next time you go to buy a hard drive or build a system or do have a specific purpose, you'll know which one you need to get. Now, the first type of hard drive is the basic desktop drive. This is probably what you're using right now, and if you were to just go and look on a store shelf, this is probably what you would see. And typically, they might be either 5400 or 7200 RPM, and there's not really any bells and whistles in here. They're pretty cheap compared to others. So for example, there's no extra vibration protection in there because they're just assumed that it's gonna be running by itself, not in a super big array of hard drives that are gonna be shaking it. So there's nothing too much to these, and they're really the basic model. And typically, these are designed with the expectation that they're gonna be run with a typical work week, so eight hours a day, five days a week, where you turn it on in the morning, turn it off at night, as opposed to having it run 24 seven, like in a server or something. And another quality of a desktop hard drive is that they typically spend a lot more time on error correcting, as opposed to an NAS drive, which I'll talk about in a bit because with a desktop hard drive, usually you don't have backup drives like with a server. It's the only copy of the data, so it's gonna spend a lot more time trying to repair sectors if something does go wrong. All right, now another really common drive you'll see is called an NAS drive for network attached storage, and this is supposed to be put usually in an array of disks, and there might be five or six disks next to each other, so that means they need a little bit more vibration protection. But there are no totally standard features on an NAS drive. It's a lot of just marketing terms. So you do want to look at the actual features because a company could say this is an NAS drive and it really doesn't do much at all. So always be aware of that. And like with the desktop, these are going to be expected and designed with a specific use case and environment. So they're expecting to be in a network array where there's gonna probably be parity drives with backup and it's gonna be vibrating a bit so it does have that vibration protection and it also is assuming that this thing is gonna be running 24 seven, not like a desktop that you turn on in the morning. Also another difference, I wouldn't even call it a feature, it's just how it is designed, is how long it spends on error correcting. An NAS drive, because it assumes it's gonna be having RAID parity drives for backup, it's not gonna spend as much time trying to correct errors because it would make more sense to just gather that information from the backup. And also, if you're in a RAID array, the drive will lock up when it does the error correcting. And if it locks up too long trying to fix this error, the RAID server is going to think that the drive died and it will drop it from the RAID array. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just know that there's a feature that makes it so the drive works better with other drives. NAS drives are gonna be a little bit more expensive, but with that, you would hopefully get some more reliability. So that means a higher MTBF or mean time between failure, which is basically how long you can expect a drive to last. It's not an exact number, but it can give you a better idea relative to others. So if it says it's a million hours versus 500,000 hours, that means that the million hour drive is probably gonna last longer than the 500,000 hour drive, obviously. Then another spec you can look at is the unrecoverable error rate. And this basically will tell you how frequently there's gonna be an error that appears on the drive just spontaneously for no reason. And these do happen on all drives, but if you get a higher quality drive, this will happen less often, which means less errors are gonna to need to be repaired by the parity drives and you're gonna get less corruption. So these are more expensive, but they do have features typically that you would want in an NAS or network tax storage situation. And if you were to use this on a desktop, it probably wouldn't make sense to do that because of the features we talked about, such as the, the less time spending on errors. If you did have an error in a desktop, you want that extra time, which you would only get with a desktop drive designed for it. So with that being said, don't assume that just because one type of hard drive is more expensive than another, that that's gonna be better in every situation. You mostly wanna look at the use case first. All right, now the next main tier of hard drives, I would say, as opposed to a category, are enterprise drives. 
And these are gonna be probably the most expensive and these are designed mostly to be used in business situations, data centers, that sort of thing where they need to have maximum reliability. So they are gonna be more expensive, but they're also gonna have higher quality parts and probably higher quality construction and reliability. And the reason for that is in most of these situations, they are gonna be used much heavier and for longer times. This isn't a personal worker's desktop. This is gonna be used for like a server or something. So in that case, it is again gonna be assumed that it's gonna be running 24 seven and possibly in a data center with lots and lots of hard drives in there. So it's gonna have, again, more uh, vibration protection along with a shorter recovery time so it can get information from the backup. One specific example of how they might be differently constructed is a lot of times an enterprise drive will have the spindle of the drive attached on both the bottom and the top as opposed to a regular drive, which would be just on the bottom. So that's gonna give you a little bit more stability. It might have some additional gyroscopes in there to absorb vibrations or if it gets moved somehow. So you're gonna be able to resist a lot more damage possibly. And again, like I said before, these will probably have an even higher MTBF, which means they're gonna be lasting a lot longer and a much better unrecoverable error rate, sometimes even 100 times fewer errors than what you get on a typical desktop drive. One software feature you might get in an enterprise drive is end-to-end -end error correction. So every time data comes in, all the way through from writing it to sending it back out again, that is going to have error checks along the way potentially. So again, with the reliability, it's definitely a key factor. A physical difference might be that a lot of enterprise drives have SAS connectors as opposed to SATA, which you usually have in any desktop drive. And some differences with SAS is that they typically have a faster connection, they can have longer cables that are more reliable, and they are full duplex which means that with normal SATA, it can only send or receive at one time, whereas SAS can actually send and receive data simultaneously in the same stream. Now, those are some major categories of drives that you'll typically see, but there are other little categories and specializations that are kind of interesting, especially if you didn't know about them before. And one example is surveillance hard drives. There are specific hard drives designed to be used in camera systems to be able to write data reliably, and that is the main objective of those drives. So a surveillance hard drive will be expecting to have very, very high write loads because it's gonna be writing literally 24 seven in addition to just running, and they're also assuming that you're not gonna really need to read that often because you only need to check the feed if something happens, presumably. So they're more optimized for writing most of the time, and they focus all the efforts on engineering it that way, as opposed to not really having to read it as much. And clearly the reason they're optimized in that way is because they need to be able to write 100% reliably, because if there are any errors that go into that feed, you know, it could lose a few frames of security footage that would be the difference between catching a robber and not catching him or something like that. And if, especially if you have multiple cameras, it needs to be able to write from multiple data streams and be able to handle all those simultaneously. And even though these drives are really good at surveillance, obviously they would not be very good in pretty much any other situation. So you wouldn't wanna put these in your desktop because it's not like you're using your desktop to write all the time. You wanna read pretty frequently too, and it wouldn't really be optimized for that at all. Wouldn't really work that well. Another type of drive we can talk about is high performance or high RPM drives. And these are basically another kind of desktop drive, but basically these just spin at a much faster speed. So whereas a regular desktop hard drive is gonna be about 7,200 RPM, a high RPM drive might be either 10K or 15,000 RPM. And the reason for that is very simple. The faster the platter spins, the more data it can access at a time and write as well. So it's gonna be faster read and write times. So say for example, you had a 15,000 RPM drive. If you were to compare that to a 7,200 RPM drive, it would probably be about double the speed like 200 something megabytes a second versus about 100. Now the thing is with these, you don't really hear about them as often. They aren't really as popular anymore because SSDs came along and just blow them out of the water. So for people who want to get better performance, SSDs are the way to go, they're way faster. So even though you might be able to get like 250 megabytes a second out of a high performance drive, you can get like 500 plus out of an SSD. The only advantage of a high RPM drive is they're usually significantly cheaper, 
But I mean, I would just go with the SSD because there's so many other benefits, but we're talking about hard drives, not SSDs. Another quick type of hard drive we can talk about is kind of new, and I think not many companies specifically make this type, but it would be archival hard drives. And these are drives like the Western Digital AE, which are specifically designed for data centers that store a lot of data that isn't really accessed that frequently. So it's called like cold storage. So this might be used in a cloud backup where you have customers backing up data and they're backing up all the time and they just wanna kinda of store that away. They're not gonna really access it that often, but if they do need to access it, they can still access it quickly. So those kinds of drives are kinda of like another type of enterprise drives, but they are best used if you're not gonna be accessing them super frequently, but they need to be able to last long. The final type of drive we can talk about is also another kind of desktop drive, I guess which are hybrid drives. You may have heard of these, also called SSHDs or solid state hard drives. And they are a combination of flash memory and a hard drive. And the idea is it has a main big drive, so it might be one or two terabytes of magnetic storage, and it'll have a smaller cache of flash memory, which would be a lot less, maybe only eight gigabytes as opposed to the couple terabytes. And what happens with these is usually it will automatically detect which files on the drive you access most frequently, and then it will put those files into the flash memory cache, which is much faster. So anytime you need to retrieve your most frequent files, you'll be able to get those a lot quicker than if it were to read off a disk. One thing to note though, is you can't actually choose which files typically go into this cache. It's all done automatically, so if you had a few files that you really wanted to be having fast access, you'd really just have to get an SSD because you can't choose otherwise. Now, me personally, I'm not a big fan of these hybrid drives. I would rather just go with an SSD, but they are significantly cheaper than an SSD. So I guess if you really don't want to spend the extra money, this might be something that you can at least try out. So I think that's it. Those are just a bunch of different types of hard drives. Maybe you didn't know that there were such a variety, but I think for most people, the only ones you're gonna be interested in are desktop drives and those varieties, and maybe even solid state drives, which I have talked about before. But in any case, I would like to know what you guys think. Do you still use hard drives? Do you prefer them because you don't wanna spend as much money? You can let us know down in the comments. And if you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, so it should be worth it. And also consider clicking the bell next to the subscribe button or else YouTube might not show you new videos. So again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.